Hi, my name is Michael De Rosie and I'm an instructor for Long Shot Shooting School based in Cold Lake, Alberta. Today I'm finalizing a research about the cold bore shot. What is a cold bore shot? A cold bore shot is a shift of your rifle's point of impact from where your zero normally is. It happens only with the first and or maybe the second shot of the day when your barrel is cold. Since the last few years after main ranges and cartridges fired at the range, I realized that cold bore shot only happen in the morning or at the beginning of the day when the barrel is cold and clean not the afternoon after lunch when the barrel is dirt and back to cold. Some will say it is in fact a cold shooter shot, which means you are rusty after days, weeks without firing with your rifle. I excluded that option with a strict training of dry firing and added to that the speed of my bullets registered with a chronograph. With that in mind, I was wondering if the cold war shot was in fact a clean bore shot. With my military training background and for specific internal ballistics reasons, I must always keep my bore clean. That is why I decided to do my own researches with chronography numbers as backing of it and to provide a good information to you and the candidates of our courses. The explanation behind a clean bore shot is the following one. Your barrel being clean and not fouled with copper and carbon, the friction between the interior of the barrel and the bullet will be different. For the first shot, there won't be any residue leaving the barrel with more imperfection and therefore the bullet will exit slower due to the friction upon it. Is it true? We'll see after the experimentation. The equipment used for the research is a TKT 3 tactical in 308, 23 3 quarter inches long with a rate of twist of 111 for the barrel. The bullets are RNA AMAX 155 grains with a ballistic coefficient of 0.213 and producing a gyroscopic stability of 1.91 with the present rifle. All bullets were unreloaded with 46.4 grains of IMR4895 in the lapra grass with a Remington Primers number 9.5 for large rifles. All the powder measurement has been weighed with a beam scale to avoid any mismeasurement. The chronograph is a F1 Master Crony. Knowing that type of chronograph is far to be the best one, I still can produce a ballistic elevation table accurate with more or less IMOA up to a kilometer with that 308. For the atmospheric data, I'm using a Kestrel 3500 weather meter. Firstly, for all the tests, the chronography was always at a distance of 3 meters from the muzzle. And to keep the consistency, I waited one minute between each shot. Ten shots were fired for each chronography. The first test was ten shots fired with a clean barrel. The second test was ten shots fired with a barrel which has been previously pulled with 100 shots. Today's test will be done with a clean barrel, two shots fired, and then after I will begin the chronography for ten shots. The purpose of this one is to remove the two first clean bore shots from the calcul of the average velocity. Now that we got all the data from the three tests, the range portion of the experimentation is now over. Let's go back in the classroom to do an assessment and to see what conclusion can be learned from that. Now that we are back in the classroom, we'll take a look at the number provided by the experimentation. And that way, we'll be able to determine which one of the three following conclusions apply to the research. Is it a clean bore shot, a cold bore shot, or is it simply a myth? Firstly, let's take a look at the graphic together. At the top of it, you can see all the information concerning the temperature, the location, the time, and the date of when the experimentation has been conducted. From left to right, you can see in first the shot column, which indicate the number of the shot, followed by the speed of it in feet per second. The last one to the right shows you the difference of speed of the actual shot compared to the average of the 10 shots together. 
Finally, at the bottom, you can see the average velocity for the 10 shots of the chronography. The maximum spread, which is the shot with the biggest difference of speed compared to the average velocity, and the average spread, which is the average of the speed fluctuation. For a good quality commercial lamination, the average spread can be between 30 and 40 feet per second. We can tell the difference here with unreloaded lamination, with a precise power measurement using a beam scale like that one. You can expect an average spread between 10 and 15 feet per second consistently. This is a huge advantage in long distance shooting. Let's begin here with the test number one and a 10 shot chronography with a clean bore. The average velocity is 2,893 feet per second. The maximum spread is 32. Interesting fact here, the bullet with the biggest spread is the first one, which is in that case a clean and cold bore shot. Now test number two. The test was conducted the day after the test number one and the bore was full with 100 shots fired. For that one, the average velocity was 2,928 feet per second. The maximum spread of that test was 57 feet per second. But the shot was the shot number 8. A very interesting result can be seen for that one. There is no variation at all for the cold bore shot. And remember, the bore was cold and full with 100 shots fired the day before, without any cleaning between the two tests. Finally, the third and last test. The test was to shoot two shots and start a chronography right after with a clean bore. For the test 3, the average velocity was 2,890 feet per second and the maximum spread 29 for the shots 3 and 4. One more time, there is no variation for the cold bore shot. To conclude the research, we will now compare the three tests. Firstly, we can see that a clean bore produces less velocity than a bore fault with carbon and copper. The difference is the same than a good commercial lamination, which is around 40 feet per second. Secondly, there is no difference between the average velocity and the cold bore shot, except for the test number one, which was a clean bore shot, so it is impossible to have a shift of your point of impact in elevation at least nothing related to a cold bar shot. Finally, with the number provided by the chronography of the three tests, we can see that only two shots fired as permitted to avoid the clean bar shot. In conclusion, with all the comparison and observation we just did, we can tell that the cold bar shot is in reality a clean bar shot, like I expected before the research. I will also say the effect doesn't have to be taken into account since the spread is less than the one produced by a good commercial ammunition. For the spread of 32 feet per second produced by the clean bore shot from the test number one, the difference in elevation of the point of impact at 800 meters between 2861 and 2893 feet per second would be a three quarter of a MOA or 6.87 inches with a 155 grain in caliber 30. If you have any questions or comments about that research, you can contact us at info at longshotschool.ca, via Facebook Longshot Shooting School, or via our website at www.longshotschool.ca. Thank you.